Good morning. Welcome to FIFO. This is Flow In, Flow Out. Danny Marowinski here with my boy Sam Nang Man. Today we have a special guest, Amber Broy, over here. We're going to get to her in a second. But just as a reminder, this podcast is filmed um, and released every morning, at, or Monday morning at 6 a.m., Friday at 4 p.m. Uh, we'll bring on special guests, all sorts of different things. And the whole point of this is to raise the collective vibrations, right? So uh, part of flow in, flow out is to just help you guys get started on things and continue to grow as we continue to grow and figure out this whole podcasting thing. So without further ado, uh, Sam Nang, you want to jump in on that? Without nice. further ado, uh, I think Dan is all good. Bros, but I'll pop down. That's what flow and flow out. We just oh. pick up. Uh, he's dropped oh, and, and he <laughs> dropped off for a little bit so we just picked up <laughs> where he stopped off uh okay. we are episode 22 <laughs> i can't believe we made it to 22 episodes but we've been consistent and our podcast better and better every time we release something and uh, one of our biggest things is to raise the collective vibrations teach each other help each other grow and teach each other about each other's why and let me tell you why we have our guests on uh, her name is Amber Broy. Amber Broy is uh, a gym mate, a uh, fellow vintage iron bodybuilder, female bodybuilder uh, enthusiast. That's how I met her. Uh, we just vibe because people bodybuild just vibe like that. Uh, <clears throat> and then we became friends on Instagram and started to learn more about Amber through her social media following. She's into a lot of cool stuff, and this podcast is about doing a lot of cool stuff and sharing a lot of cool stuff. So I'll tell her a little bit what I know. I know she's a female bodybuilder. She's competing in the same show I'm competing in in October. Um, she's a sourdough enthusiast. She <laughs> is a, a gym fashionado. She is an ice bath whip off master. She is uh, a puppet, like... Uh, influencer on the rise. She just got a sponsorship, and dude, her her drip level is always at ten at the gym. And that's the introduction. Welcome to the show, Amber Broy. Man, I like who is this female? Like, where is she? Yeah, here you go. <laughs> Thank you. No, seriously, I I appreciate that. Um, yeah, you pretty much just summed me up. That that was perfect. And the podcast, shut it down. Shut up. See you. See you guys. Oh, that's it. We're done. That was it. That was it. That's still it. Nice knowing you. <laughs> yes, introduce yourself. I said, so this is Amber's second uh, podcast because I saw yeah. her first. Like, well, we better make it better than the first one. So that's the goal. So <laughs> say what you need to say that you didn't say on the first one. And then um, who you think? Give you space okay. to share. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, so yes, I am into the bodybuilding realm right now. I didn't start getting into that until last, actually last March is when I started my first prep and then I competed in October of last year. Um, so that's how I got into the kind of the realm of bodybuilding. I didn't even know if it was going to be my thing till I did it. I was like, I'm going to for sure do one from there. It might be just a one and done type thing. But I got into it, got in with like different posing coaches and just met a bunch of really cool people through this world of bodybuilding. I feel like bodybuilding gets a really bad rep. So going into it, I was kind of having that in the back of my mind. Yeah, really? Thinking, what's, the bad, what's the bad yeah, rep? Uh, just you, you hear so many bad things, especially in the female portion of bodybuilding. Now I'm going to speak from the female side because I don't pretend to know what you guys go through, but I feel like females get a really bad rap if they're in bodybuilding because people automatically assume you have a, a like right. you have bad views of food, you have an eating disorder, um, you're vain, you're, you know, you only care about like your image. You don't do anything else other than the gym and it it's, yeah. I think that's why my page is kind of all over the place. If somewhere to go, and at, at the beginning, I was kind of thinking I needed to hone in on my page, like put one thing out there for people to see. But then I was talking, and then I was talking to other people, getting feedback, and that's just that. That's what I want to convey to other women: is you can have a complete 
full life and still do this sport. You know, like, yes, the prep aspect, when you're cutting in the cutting phase, yes, that's an intense phase that at times can be, especially the last six weeks, see, that's a very selfish stage. Like the gym is your priority. Your cardio is your priority. You do not miss a meal or you, you know, you, you go out with friends and you don't eat you know, you eat what you were supposed to eat. So the last six weeks is for sure very intense, but the lifestyle. for the most part, yeah, the lifestyle can be everything normal. <laughs> can I ask you a question, Amber? So I'm, I, sure. I'm obviously not a bodybuilder. I'm an aspiring sure. one. I live vicariously through Sam Nang, um, but <laughs> I am starting to work on building my body my way, not necessarily to compete, but um you hit on a couple of really interesting things to me. And so just in what you were talking about in female bodybuilding and kind of some of the stereotypes that you were talking about, the first thing that I thought of is like, okay, well, let's say that you wanted to be a, a, a ballroom pianist, right? How come you don't get as much judgment for practicing there, right? Like, so what, where do you think, why is it that in your sport, because all what you're, what I'm hearing from you is like, look, I just like to practice and this is part of my lifestyle. And I, <laughs> I am like, you like you said, you treat it like a sport. It's not like a, it's not like an image thing or a vain thing. So where do you think the disconnect is? Like, how, how do you think the world looks at it and what we're, we're, what's missing, I guess, from the bodybuilder perspective to help people understand like, hey, it's just a sport like anything else. And I'm just out here practicing just like I would if I want to get better at a musical instrument. Yeah. I think, uh, and Sam Nong, you can join in on that too. From my perspective, and now because I've been so engrossed in it over the last year, I really think the word that you just used to describe it is it's a sport. And you're correct. I'm like, people will sit here and say bodybuilding is so unhealthy. And there can be unhealthy attributes to it. Like no one, sure. no one in the bodybuilding realm is going to sit here and say it's the most healthy thing I've ever done in my life. We know the last six weeks is not good. Like we know that, <laughs> you know, that's why you properly go through your prep. So you don't totally kill yourself at the end. But I think the reason why there's so much judgment to it is because it has to do with your outward appearance. It has to do with the fact that you're a very nutritious, driven, disciplined person. And unfortunately, in the society that we live in, those are attributes you don't find anymore. Like, it's hard to find driven people. It's hard to find people that actually it's give true. a crap about their health. Yeah. And when you talk about that to anyone that's not in that realm, you automatically think, oh, you're judging me or, oh, I can't eat this around you because you're going to like think bad things about me. <laughs> and it's like, isn't that funny that you know, you're, you're yeah. so right, Amber, but it's, I find it so fascinating, right? It's like, just because you're working on your, on your body and you're, I mean, and like you said, first off, I mean, the other thing too, it's unhealthy for the last six weeks. I'm, I'm, I came from professional snowboarding. I've had eight oh, surgeries. Okay. How on earth can you tell me that snowboarding is healthy for me? <laughs> Right, Not the right. football. You know, you're like, getting your head jammed into someone else the whole entire game. Like, <laughs> yeah. Any high level that you want to do, it's a little unhealthy. It's a little all balanced. Like, exactly. It's all about balance and really knowing when your body is telling you, okay, we need to like maybe tone it down a bit. Exactly. I mean, but right. that's like your body to get stronger. So like when um, uh, I want to chime in because yes, Amber definitely pulled some great points that I kind of. Let's say I want to put a thread on as well too. Uh, so female bodybuilding, uh, male bodybuilding, they are almost two completely different sport. Like uh, I'd never pretend to actually like coach any females or anything, but like I've been in the bodybuilding and coach guys and everything. And the whole uh, female side is a little bit different. That's why I wanted to bring Amber on to kind of get her perspective and her side on how things are viewed. Uh, in the so I also want to clarify that. Uh, Amber and I are both natural bodybuilders. So yeah. one of the big misconceptions is that bodybuilders are on steroids or <laughs> yes. sauce. Uh, but the route I took was always natural bodybuilding, where it just means that we don't take any anabolics, uh, mm -hmm. pharmaceuticals. Uh, we do take ster uh, not steroids, but like uh, supplements. <laughs> we don't take those, but now, yes, we do. <laughs> So it's tested and everything. The reason why I chose this route because it it, it pushes me towards like 
learning more about nutrition, learning more about my body, uh, cultivating the discipline. Uh, for me, the reason why I chose not to go that route is because uh, I chose I wanted the discipline route to get to get that process instead of actually just the result. Like in bodybuilding, is like it's a weird thing where like you lift and you're it's never perfection. You never really get there, so you just keep going in day out and uh, day out. But um, full circle, I, the thing that I wanted to pull, pull the thread on was the difference between like female bodybuilders and like male bodybuilders. Uh, I, I understand the benefits of li lifting and bodybuilding is to like men and how it increases and helps with like their masculine look and their feel and everything. The female side, there's a femininity that the the competitors uh like have to exude when they're on stage i guess coming with like the lifting weights changing your body and doing posing and everything how does that change like your image of yourself oh it changed it drastically so when i first told my coach that i wanted to compete um i was trying to figure out what category i could go in uh, for those who don't know there's several categories you have bikini figure um, wellness. And then there, I think there's two, there's, I think it's actually called bodybuilding. Don't quote me on that. So there's several categories you can go into. I was thinking I was in between bikini and figure. I really wanted to go into figure because bikini to me at the time had such a bad rap of what exactly what you just said. It's pretty much just a beauty pageant and that's all it is. <laughs> and I am the most they just, they just eat less food and they learn how to pose and that's yes, what it is. exactly it's all about like the hair flips and like the winks and like hey hey you know but well, it's like I'm absolutely not going into that category but I sent my coach several pictures and poses and she said I know you want to do figure figures all about the x frame for those who don't know so it's a, a broader upper body a lot of lat action and a smaller lower half still defined yeah. still muscular but lower body so that's figure in a nutshell um anyway my coach was like you're not big enough yet in your lat area and you need bigger shoulders so we need to go into bikini first you have a really nice just silhouette frame and i really think we can do well in bikini so i was like fine that's what we'll do so i went balls to the wall in bikini and i i was just telling sam nong this the other day at the gym i fell in love with it I, the, when I first started getting into it, I was like, this is so stupid. The posing aspect, the working out aspect is just as gruesome as any other category. You're still busting your tail. And I think that's, again, another misconception with the bikini category is it's just your muscle needs to be leaner. They don't want striations and stuff like that. They do want a very feminine, lean muscle, but you're still busting your tail to get that. <laughs> you're still eating a lot of food in the off season to get the muscle growth you're looking for. But when I started getting into posing, I knew that was gonna be a really weak point for me because I'm not, I'm a very, um, I look like a female, but I think like a dude, <laughs> you know? Like I grew up very tomboyish. I was always up in a tree. I was always playing street hockey. I was like, sports was my thing. So when someone said you had to pose like this, I was I looked at them like they had three heads. <laughs> I was like, there is no way that's gonna convey from this chick right here. But I got into it and I took a lot of like feedback. I took a lot of criticism. I still get criticized, which is fine. That's how you grow. But um, I fell in love with it and I became good at it. And I really liked my shapes and I really liked the femininity that came out with the muscle that I knew I grew in the gym. Yeah. And I think that's where I actually blossomed in my femininity outside of the gym. I became more confident as a woman because of what I was doing in my sport. So I was yeah. put in a very uncomfortable situation, but I also found like I blossomed in certain areas outside my life because I was like, oh, <laughs> there she is. <laughs> I, I found her. <laughs> you found her, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Amber, let me ask you a, a kind of curveball, well, not curveball, but just like sidebar question on top of this. Um, so you got into bodybuilding about a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. right? Now, who is Amber Broy outside of bodybuilding? Like, what, where, where'd you come from? You know, where are you today? What do you do? And then just kind of a short kind of sure. background intro. And then what was the moment? that it kind of switched for you and you're like, you know what, I'm going to pursue this sport bodybuilding. Sure. 
Uh, so I grew up, I have, I'm, a, I'm the oldest of six siblings, so I grew up from a very big household. We were all homeschooled growing up. Um, my dad was military, and then he was a pastor for several years. Um, and then I got married to my first husband, who was also a pastor, and it was a very toxic, abusive relationship. Um, so I left the, I left that type of religious realm, um, got divorced. I'm, I'm a mom to a beautiful eight-year-old daughter. Um, and at the time she was two when I left my ex-husband. <clears throat> so I pretty much started my life over as a single mom, had a really good career with a financial institution in the area. And, uh, I found, um, through me figuring out my life, I found my husband now, um, who's also into the whole, uh, he doesn't do bodybuilding like showing, but he's also very intense into fitness. Um, oh, yeah. The beast. And, yeah. He... <laughs> the Terminator. Oh, that's what everyone calls him. What's but, the call? uh, Terminator. Terminator? Yeah, he, yeah. he really Terminator. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, found him, and I've been married to him for almost three years now, and, um... I turned 35 last year and so 30 I went skydiving and then 35 <laughs> I don't know some it just I'm telling you I'm literally like a squirrel if I just see a nut randomly I just I'm I'm over there so I'm, I'm like all over the place with what I enjoy doing in life anyway so I was already doing the gym very heavily at that time and I was turning 35 and I just had this moment where I was I freaked out and I was like, I need to do something amazing, <laughs> you know, at 35. So that's, that's why I did it. I wanted something super cool to say that I did at age 35. <laughs> that's awesome. Like, that's was awesome. Just, was there anybody that inspired you? Did you see like a female bodybuilder? Yeah. Uh, so I followed a ton of people in the fitness realm, even before I was like actually in it, just because the gym was still a heavy part of my life. Um, yeah, yeah. I had a coach who was an IFBB pro. Her name's Ashley. Uh, she's on Instagram too. And she's amazing. She, um, she was coaching me in my nutrition and that's who I went to. I saw all of her posts and I saw her journeys and she talked to me openly about it when I asked her questions. And so she honestly yeah. really, she helped you. Helped and got you. That's, yeah. that's how people in, talk about our lives inconsistently. And then people start gravitating towards us. And that's how, that's how, like, I find friends and, like, uh, my close group of friends. <laughs> like, I just talk so much about it. It becomes who I am. And they're like, hey, they know that I'm going to be talking about bodybuilding and fitness and stuff. And I thoroughly enjoy it. I think um, what, what, I, what I heard, Amber, like, and I thought it was, like, I want to uh, point out is that you said that you found the real Amber. And I was like, that, that was, like, that was cool because I don't think, uh, you know, for me, it's like, what that I'm authentic and uh, I get that, that those type of compliments is because like I'm in the gym and I'm finding like I'm I'm struggling in the gym and then like really getting you know myself while I'm in the gym right for me I'm in the gym it's like 90 minutes or two hours of yeah. very focused work and stuff sometimes I get interrupted but uh, I I get back <laughs> um, but I built up the practice over i call it a practice you know it's like i'm trying to make yeah. it better each day each week each cycle or what i'm doing uh i'm not sure if you guys know a little bit amber about me is like i uh i'm old school bodybuilder i've been lifting weights since like 16 and then i started competing maybe um uh, at like the age of 31 so i'm 38 37 so like i grew up with like bodybuilding I grew up with like, like being fun. Yeah. It was like my thing. Like I grew up as a kid, like, hey, I can't I wanted to be a bodybuilder. Like, uh so when I got the opportunity, Danny knows me in, in high school, but I don't know if he knew me like when I stepped to the uh the first day I stepped into the gym in ninth grade. Uh, this is it. Like I knew the moment I didn't want to do anything beside that. There was like times where I uh I didn't go to the gym as consistently, but that was like in college. But when when I went to the gym consistently and I was seeing progress productive and making like my goals and stuff that to me felt so authentic because I was living like I was like growing everything was growing for me and currently right now I'm competing and striving to become a professional but I'm growing I like 
specifically in my body. And then also too, it really does translate towards like your, your brain and your thought process and your personal development. And the point I wanted to kind of drive, I was like, when you, when we talk about like bodybuilding and like doing hard stuff, discipline stuff, it brings out the real person in you, you know, the person that like, and then when I, when I see you as like, okay, that, that is like what people should be like, you know, confident, strong, and um, remember, uh, you guys know who Amy Cuddy is? Mm, I don't think so. So Amy Cuddy is in the personal development uh, world. She has this thing. It's called a power pose, right? For like females. And oh, like the Wonder Woman one? Yeah, she's. I think she's the one who stands like this. Or okay. Like that. Yes, I think I do know her then. Yeah, it gives you kind of like a, like a feeling that you're you're strong and confident. And they, so her name is Amy Cuddy. But it's like, I, I'm always like flexing. People that know me did that. <laughs> you know what I need to, but that's like a, for me to kind of like feel like I'm in a powerful uh, situation. And I think, right. you know, the, the point is like bodybuilding, being able to change your body and being able to control it is a very powerful tool yeah. in personal development. So I want to point that out. And if you guys heard about uh, Amy Cuddy or like how confident you can include confidence in your life and stuff. <clears throat> but yeah. Well, I think along that thread, right? And this is something I'm learning in my own journey, Amber, and, and this is maybe you can reflect on this too. So I've been going through my own personal development journey for the last almost 10 months now. And it started with quitting alcohol and then getting fit and starting to like focus on my business, so on and so forth. Um, but I realized like for me, it was, I had to master my mind and it was, I was, my problem was, is I was turning to things like alcohol to deal with my stress versus just letting me deal with my stress. And like now when I experience a stressful moment or if I like a, a moment of anxiety, I literally mm. will just sit there in it and just experience it and feel it knowing that I'm going to, I'm charting a path to not experience this kind of feeling again. Right. Or if I do that's feel it That's such a powerful like, place to be that I don't think, I don't. Again, we live in such a society of like, I want you to do the work for me. So when you have to tell somebody like, hey, I can give you the tools, but you have to be the one to fix yourself, you know? 100%. So just being able to realize, you know, or seeing the red flags, I'm turning to alcohol. Why am I turning to alcohol? I was the right. same way. I, I, was, I wouldn't consider myself like an alcoholic. I, I didn't drink a ton, but for me, I was turning to whiskey almost every night. And I yeah. could see it in my face. I could see it in the way that I was just handling life situations. I could see it in my anxiety. So this is a great segue into ice baths <laughs> because that's why I started doing them. Um, <laughs> tell so me, tell me a little bit about bath, that. Danny, you need to do an ice bath. <laughs> oh, I, trust me. I, I used to do, uh, when, in my professional snowboarding career, I was doing ice oh, baths before okay. they were like <laughs> trending and cool. So I'm a, I'm a huge fan of ice baths. Okay. I don't have one right now, but um, I, I, there is a uh, ice bath sauna place that I go to that's pretty awesome. Oh, but, cool. um, but yeah, I guess my question to you is, so I'm now, I have this lens, right? So I feel like I've mastered my mind, but then I realize, like, okay, now I really need to master my body. So now I'm, and Sam Nang really helped me kind of open my eyes on this. Um, and it was like, he basically told me, he was like, Danny, can you visualize your body and what it would look like the way that you want it to look? And before I never really did that, right? I look at myself in the mirror and I'd be like, okay, like I have, I'm starting to lose the beer gut or now I'm like down to like, Hey, I look like I just popped out of puberty, right? Like this is like Danny <laughs> right after I hit puberty. So I'm like, okay. And I had my first experience where I was like, oh, I could like sculpt my shoulders and I could see my chest getting a little bit bigger and like more defined arms. And I like could visualize that, right? Like almost like me expanding and then that's when it realized i was like you know what i know i've mastered my mind but now i have to mass I, I want to master my body and that's almost my outward demonstration to the world saying that yeah. like if you see my body then you know that i've mastered my mind yeah um, exactly. so that was kind of my journey i was i'm wondering for you from your perspective do you think that it was all did you follow a similar path of like finding your mind like mastering your mind and then your body or you said that you were into the gym so was it more that as you were working on your body, that started to help you with your mind 
How, how do you play the two in your kind of journey? So we all have different ways. We all have different stories and how we end up sometimes on the same path is crazy to me. Um, <clears throat> I grew up very, like I stated earlier, very, very, very religious. Uh, you couldn't wear uh, certain, you had to wear certain types of clothes. Um, <clears throat> girls weren't allowed to wear makeup. There was never, you were not allowed to work yeah. out. Like you, yeah. if you did, you worked out in your home. So men wouldn't be tempted by you. Uh, so that was how I grew up. Um, so when I left my husband, who was also in that type of religious realm, um, I didn't know who I was. I had no clue. I only knew for my first 30 years who I was supposed to be, what I was supposed to look like, how I was mm. supposed to act, how I was supposed to dress. And like, if I didn't act that way, I was sinning and God was going to like strike me dead type vibes. Um, so going into fitness after that, my mental was all over the place. I was hurt. Um, I was, <clears throat> I, I was abused in a relationship verbally so much that I believed what he thought of me. I believe that of myself too. So I didn't, when I got into the fitness space again, I, I was terrified not because of the normal fears of a female going into a gym. I was terrified because I thought I was doing something wrong, e even though I enjoyed it mm. so much. I, mm. I've been told no <laughs> for so long. I was like, Oh man, I'm like, is someone to like come smack me or something, you know? So the gym for me was a very healing part. And it took me four year, four to five years of just going to the gym I didn't I had, I had no clue what I was doing. I didn't know how to eat. I didn't know what my goals were in it. I just knew I needed the gym for I it helped the anxiety and it yeah. helped it helped just me in depressing type situations in my brain. So that's how I fell in love with it again. And um from there I was healing. I finally got to a good space and then that's when I was like, you know, what? I think I could compete and do well in it. So that's how I got into, so yeah, the, the healing journey yeah. of the gym, <laughs> I don't think people really people, talk about it that much. Yeah, people don't talk about it. I, I'm glad you brought it up because that, that was a big part of my process of <clears throat> processing a lot of feelings. The gym is, you could get in your feels there, but yes. it's normal. Like, I think it's normal that uh, you could go and cut, or have a little bit of aggression. That's why I love it. Like I, I can't express aggression or anger. Well, I do in my car in my, in my apartment, but like in front of people, you can't really. But in in normal situations, <coughs> a way to process feelings, and that's how like when, and it's like it's not I'm to cliche and say that like the gym therapy, but it's a form of something. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's a form of healing because I I was watching a podcast about somebody talking about how much emotional pain can cause physical pain <laughs> and it's weird to say because like a david goggins mentality the only way to uh get rid of it is add more pain it's it's really counterproductive it, it goes kind of against what society thinks but that's really how you heal because mm -hmm. you're in some emotional pain and you have to change it to like physical pain and it's called like transformation uh, you know, in, where, in my field of study, because I study a lot of philosophy and stuff. And, you know, I, I think when we start all bodybuilding, we all start off for kind of like different reason. But it's a lot of it. It's really just uh, just because we're fucking insecure about something. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody has a starting point of when they're bodybuilding or when they start working on themselves. Because there they're gets to a point where there's so much pain that it, it, it gets point where like hey i need to start working right like some people that we talk to and coach on the show it's like hey some people might have like a, a desk not a desk scare but like a doctor scare and that's pain right and i keep telling everybody it was like the pain that you're avoiding is going to become somewhere else right so right. might as well put pain now so you can handle the the pain later and it's very like an eastern philosophy type of, of thing and that's kind of like what i'm you know like part of my, what my brand is and my my coaching is is just to teach you that hey right now even though 
life might seem easy, but eventually it might get harder. And if you have a process of going to the gym and learning how to ground yourself and control your emotions and stuff, you're able to manage stress a lot better and be authentic and be the real person, you know, that can handle life. That's why it's like so for for me, it's like so important for to teach people that, hey, you guys need to get in the gym. You need to start doing consistently hard stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's that that's uh, that's my uh, my point on that. Uh, I wanted to I mean, tell you. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I was just going to say, and, it, and the one thing I'll, I can kind of piggyback on off of that, of what both of you guys just said, right? So I just had this experience, uh, Amber, um, on Friday. That's actually why I missed the podcast, because I started up this running group, so we got to talk about schedules. But um, <laughs> I went out and I ran with a group of guys. I've kind of formulated like a small entrepreneurial, hey, let's get out and do something physical and then outside, and then let's talk about growing our business and go about our day. So on Friday, I went, I went and I ran with actually one of my clients. He's a runner. I'm not typically a runner. And we did a 5K and I hit a personal record that day, right? So I had a nine minute mile consistent nine. for all three and a half. And so for me, that's a big deal. Yeah. And man, I know that the rest of that day, right? Like this is all done. I was done, wash, rinse, repeat at this at, by like 8 a.m. The rest of that day, I was like, I just crushed my own personal record. Like I had my head high. I had yeah. already accomplished something in my own personal life that everything that day just hit, right? And it almost like I ended up taking like a big sales call that day too. And I've noticed that like the more that I do these these kind of journeys early in my day with myself, the better the results are with my life on the back end, right? So yeah. I, I, that brings me to my kind of my next question for you. As you started heal the healing process in the gym, did you find, did you start playing with times when you went? Did you go kind of all over the day or did you kind of had a set time and was it early? Was it later? And if so, how did that kind of affect the psyche as you got into that habit? So I didn't really have a specific time because again, at that point I was a single mom. So I had to go in. So I tried to keep as much of a schedule as possible at the time. Um, I worked a night shift. So I think my shift was like four to one in the morning. So I would go after work. Uh, so I would go oh, wow. work about an hour just because usually by the time you get home, you can't really go to sleep anyway right away. <laughs> so I was like, I'm just going to go to the gym. At the time, it was Planet Fitness 24-7. Um, this was before COVID hours <laughs> and then, um, yeah, so I would go at two in the morning, probably wasn't the best time, you know, knowing now what I know, um, you know, I wasn't sleeping well, I was still waking up at six in the morning cause I had a two year old that I was taking care of, you know? So, um, but yeah, I, I didn't really have set times. I didn't experiment with that cause I couldn't at that point. And then even now, I have a pretty set time. I take my daughter to school every day. So I, I'm generally there same time every day just because that works for my schedule. So, yes, I know. No. <laughs> so it leads to a consistent life, to be honest. Like, when I when I can handle my, uh, like, my shit was all over the place. My gym schedule was all over the place. I realized that. Then when I prioritize it, like, first thing in the morning, it's like at 6 a.m., uh, yeah just becomes organized. I don't like, because that's also a space to just think about the day, anticipate the day as well too. And then just get really those endorphins high. Yeah. What, what the endorphins, your passage, your blood's pumping and everything. And then you're ready to tackle. Like I had, we, we all have to do very hard sh stuff, you know, as entrepreneurs and people that are building business and stuff, but it, it gives you the ability to just fucking, all right, I'm just going to get through it. As, I as, hate as, going at night. But, like sometimes my schedule now is I can't go in the morning because I work from home. Sometimes my work is like I can't go, so I'll go at night. <laughs> and I just, I was, as, as soon as I walk in, I'm just like I, I'm done. I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> like let's, I will, but my workout sucks because I just hate it so much. Let's talk about nutrition. I think I mean every uh, like for anybody I talk about, everybody knows like working out is fun. Like, working <clears> out. <throat> anybody gets started in like lifting weights and seeing progress, it's it's a joy. Uh, and you want to see it like uh, I coach my nephew who's been consistently going for like eight, just seeing gains on the game. Well, <laughs> and but uh, like the trick, right? There's there's like a big like people are. I feel so confused about what to eat, how to eat, and everything. It's like why is it so hard to get 
uh, this point across of just like you just eat it a very balanced meal and don't have to go on diets. You don't have to like kill yourself. You don't have to like deprive yourself because we at bodybuilders, we eat restricted diets. But for me, it's like I get very creative in what I have, like, and what, you know, like I have templates and stuff, but like teach us a little bit, like how to have variety, how to include it in lifestyle, especially having like a daughter. And because you, you spoke something about like your daughter had this, said something on your Instagram about ranch, ranch dressing, or like a certain food that, that will make you fat. I was like, nothing really makes you fat. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> No one thing makes you fat. Right. There's no food that'll make you fat. That's that's why when people come to me, especially females, are like, yeah, I'm on a carb-free diet. I'm like, <laughs> do you realize that carbs are your energy? So how are you getting through your day? You know, there's so much misinformation. It's just so much garbage fad diets that people, you know, this is controversial, but the carnivore diet or, you know, a carb-free diet or <laughs> like a fat-free diet. Carnivore- that as Danny we're, we're talking about here is like it's like how can you just eat only vegetables how can you only just eat butter and eat? you can I don't... but it's not going to end well because eventually your body I, everyone that I know that's gone on a diet restricting something yeah I'm not saying there's portion control portion control is important but restricting something like I can't have that because that's bad yeah they end up gaining all the way back. And it's because well, it's not think, an actual lifestyle. <laughs> right. And I, and I was just going to say, and like, that's the thing that I can't stand about diets. Even my wife is the same way, right? My wife is working on, she's down 10 pounds. She's off her third kid now, fourth yeah. pregnancy. We had a miscarriage in the mix and it was oh, pretty sorry. close. So we have a 10 month old. So my wife is working hard to drop that baby weight. And she's like, you know, I give her a hard time from time to time just to try and help her, not like negatively, but it's like, I'll see her eat like, you know, a bunch of bread. And I'm like, honey, should you be eating that? And she's like, I'm not stopping my diet. Like I like, and it's, uh, and I think that there's something interesting and she's, my wife is, I believe, right. Right. And I've learned from that. It's like, no, like you can do that as long as you're burning the amount of calories that you're putting in to your point, right? Like you're not fat. And I think or you're not going to get fat from your diet. And I think that people think about these diets, these fad diets, because everybody wants the easy button. Well, if I yeah. just go on this diet, and they also think very temporarily, right? If I go on this diet, I get the bikini body for the summer, right? And like, but then it's like, and then after that, then I'll just go back to my old ways. Yeah, and then I'm I'll old. go on the next diet. <laughs> and then I'll go on the next diet. <laughs> right. And it's like, no, like, it's not like the term diet isn't this thing that you do for a temporary period of time. It is like what you should be thinking is, is how do I want to adopt a new lifestyle? Right. Like that's and I totally agree with you, both of you on that. I think you would agree on that. Like it's a new lifestyle. It's not a diet. The diet's part of it. Like and that's part of that lifestyle that you're choosing. Right. Mm -hmm. It's to, to not go get the processed foods and eat more whole foods, which isn't like a diet. It's like, yeah, it's like you're going to. It's like upgrading you eat better food you're going to have better results with your body, period. And that's why I love so much them. I love macros. I love thinking of my food in macros. I don't like being like, because so many women, women will only say, well, how many calories are you eating? Well, I can give you that number, but <clears throat> let's break down the macros because that's, that's what actually is going to help you in that mindset of, well, can I eat that? Or can I not eat that? If it fits in your macros, eat it. Even if that's a crumble cookie, you know, like you have to be careful in that. But you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I feel the macros aspect is so much healthier than just you can have 1200 calories a day. Well, what does that mean? Like, what? So what's like- what's a tip on the macro side? Because I have a, a my wife's best friend, she's into fitness, she runs a fitness program, online fitness program. She talks a lot about macros. And should she explained a little bit to me, I was like overwhelmed. I was like, oh my gosh, like I have to look at all of these ingredients and like do this math calculation in my head. So what's a good kind of entry point to macros for those that have probably heard the term, but maybe never practiced it? Do you have any type of of tips or tricks that you could look at your food Mm -hmm. and determine macros without feeling like you're doing some crazy math calculation? So... So I had a professor in college that I would always use the the word kiss. 
Um, but it stands for keep it simple, stupid. Yep. And that's honestly how I think of macros. I, I'm not going to go get, no, I can, cause I'm so comfortable now with how to quickly put a macro in the category it needs to go in protein, fat, carb. But when you're first starting out, I feel like keeping it as simple as possible until you fully get the concept of what this means for what your body needs in that moment. So keeping a protein, you know, like chicken, steak, whatever your protein, salmon, that's the protein. So say your macro for protein is like right now I'm at 170 grams of protein a day. So that's about probably a good six ounce salmon, you know, so that's going to be my salmon course for that, my, my protein for that meal. Then I'll have a veggie. Um, and then a uh, carb, I would do probably a sweet potato or normal potatoes. And, you know, if my carbs are around 100, you know, usually, I don't know, Sam Nong, you can <laughs> join in on this. Usually like, uh, I don't know, 80, 80 to 200 grams of a potato is... Oh, no, I don't eat any potatoes. I'm actually not a potato guy. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just I, saying, finding I'm, simple I'm, ingredients to make your meals match your macros is, I yeah. think, just starting out in that realm of counting. So food. basically what you're saying is is craft your meals with a protein, a vegetable, and, and some type of a, a healthy carb. And yes. that if you just started doing that with equal-ish portions, yeah. that's your journey towards being more yeah. macro aware yep uh, a quick run on too i actually put together a coaching call for uh uh my new coaching program so i ran down it's uh basic nutrition that put like a, a eating out guide as well too so you could practice eating out when you're going to like chick-fil-a or going to express chipotle uh because you have to like if you're like out and about and stuff it's you can't cook meals all the time. So I put this call together where you could actually like learn how to eat while you're at like these restaurants. But uh, basic nutrition, the macros and the micronutrients, uh, Amber did a great job like explaining it and everything. But all it is is just like paying Tetris all day with your food. That's how I would uh, just say what it, it's kind of in simplified way is paying Tetris with your food by looking at like protein, 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 right? The best way to start off is to just look for protein, and that, that gives you an idea like the size, the portion, <clears throat> everything, and keeps you consistent. And it's very easy. And then after you do it for a couple of times, you create like some template of like yeah. meal. That means every time you're cooking, you always got to cook with a, you always got to start with the meat, you know? Like if you're cooking for the family and stuff, you start with the meat first. And then for me, it's like I always prioritize vegetables. Uh, as much vegetables as you can, different varieties that gets the micronutrients. And then if you want to lose weight and everything, that's when you start to look at the calories and the macronutrients. And then you can manipulate more with uh, physical training. But the consistency is very big. And the first part of nutrition is adhering to it. So you start off slow and build up to it. You know, nobody does like a perfect, nobody is perfect nutrition so there's a little flexibility built into it with the macros that's why it's probably the best uh best way to incorporate into the lifestyle but within the macros there's different ways to calculate some people like to use the phone application i like to use my eye because my eye is the quickest thing and i use my hand as like a reference of like size and anything and then if it's not 100 percent accurate it's not a big deal but if you're competing and getting close to a show that's you dial it in more and more and more. But it's not necessary that you have to be, because people think of misconception, you got to eat like chicken and broccoli, chicken and broccoli. Like <laughs> that that was like old school bodybuilding. That's what I used to eat like in college. But then I was like, oh, okay. And then I started learning about macronutrients. And I was like, I'm making so much more progress and still enjoying the food and the lifestyle that I have. I'm just more educated on it. But right. yes, so, uh, that I recorded. So if anybody's watching the podcast, wants to jump on, and I can teach you nutrition. <laughs> Let me, uh, so this is, this is interesting to me, right? So, um, cause I think you guys just broke it down. Like for someone like myself who has an idea around this, you, Amber, you just made it so simple. It's like, and it's like a duh to me, right? Like, yeah, just eat a well-balanced meal. <laughs> so, that was and duh. I think most people are aware carbs, you know, they provide the sugar, which provides you the energy. I think most people get that concept protein, 
same thing. Most people get the concept of like, okay, protein gives you the protein to help build the muscle that you're burning, you know, and that you're using throughout the day. So I get those two. And then vegetables is an interesting one because I think people for the most part are like, well, you need to eat your vegetables because they're good for you. And it's like, well, how can you, how does that work in your Tetris block? Right. Cause I can at least visually see this. So if I'm physical and I have muscle fatigue and I feel my muscles are in pain, if I eat protein the next day, my muscles aren't in, aren't as in much pain, right? Like I recover faster so I can connect those dots for my like physical being, right? Same thing. If I'm feeling like I have low energy, if I'm feeling sluggish, if I eat a carb or if I eat something with sugar in it, right? I can get that that spur, uh, spur, bounce of energy so I can keep going and lift myself up. So where does vegetables fit in that world of the Tetris game as you're feeling things? Like how, what, what, I mean, and I know it sounds like a really dumb question, but can you equate it to something as simple as like low energy, eat carbs, muscle fatigue, eat protein? Can you connect yeah. that to another feeling that you get with vegetables? So in if you, so in bodybuilding world, like when you're in prep, I'm going to speak for just myself, the veggies still were carbs. So a lot of now, if I were to coach someone in nutrition outside of bodybuilding, I would say eat as many veggies as you want. Like there is no, yeah. if you're not going to get fat from eating vegetables, <clears throat> like eat as many vegetables as you want. And vegetables are your diet, hey. you know? <laughs> so eat as many as you want in bodybuilding though. Like you weigh even your vegetables, your broccoli, you're weighing your asparagus, you're weighing because it still, still has a nutrition factor of a carb. Correct. Sam Nong, like that's, it does, but it, I don't think it's as drastic as it's not starchy. So for me, it's like, I, I go heavy on vegetables for a reason. The reason why I go heavy on the vegetables is because it's nutrient dense. When I get, we, we're getting like lower to like deplete it and you're eating like just chicken and broccoli or fish and like uh, broccoli or whatever, right? The nutrient density gives you a little bit more, it's higher quality foods, yeah. kind of give you more energy, right? So that's why it's like, I, and that's like each, each coach is a little different or everybody does it a little bit different, right? Uh, but I got to the, but for me, it's like uh, vegetables are still energy, like you're saying. They are carbs, but they don't make you fat. But they also give you those like micronutrients and stuff. That's why I always promote it, and I also promote a lot of like digestion. So the faster, the more vegetables you have, the more fiber you have in your diet. It uh, it processes the food quicker, so it'll get into your muscles. It'll build. It'll uh, uh, like the glycogen, or if you're if you have like a uh, bread, it gets into the glycogen or to the muscle and is created as like glycogen faster. So that's why it's like you're you're speeding up the process. I think that's how you speed up your metabolism. So when people say they want to speed up the metabolism, <clears throat> it's a lot of like digestion. So for me, it's like I focus so heavily on it and coach a lot about it because if you have a clean gut, uh, you have a lot of fiber in your diet, your your bowels are moving regularly and everything, and if you eat like a certain food, your body's going to absorb it a lot. Better. So it, that's for me, it's like, that's why I always talk about fiber, fiber, keep your gut clean. And that has a big effect also too on like your mental uh, mind as well, too, like what you eat. Because uh, the, bre the, uh, the intestines, the, I think the lower tract, it's like a, the, the microbiome, that's what they say, it's directly connected to the brain. So that's why I'm always talking about like eating brain food, healthy fats. There's times where you could time things for specifically what you need. And bodybuilders eat like crispy treats before they bodybuild because they're trying to get that quick carb in their muscle. Uh, you know, different things do different things. And this is all continuous like research and stuff. And for me, like when I coach, I always try to coach like self-knowledge. So if you're figuring out if something works for you, like, uh, to me, it's like I couldn't eat a lot of red meat. I couldn't have like red meat more than like a week because it'll make me not go to the bath regularly. So I just keep it. And that that's just me, self-knowledge. You know, my coach didn't tell me. I think <clears throat> you're coaching yourself or it's more important to actually coach yourself because the coach could tell you from their perspective. But if you as a person or a client that's being coached and know, hey, when I eat this food, it makes me feel like that's something that you should listen to the body 
like for me it's like i stick to like higher quality proteins i didn't realize one time i i ate a lot of, uh this is just from my personal experience i just like experimenting i used to eat a lot of pork not a lot but it was like not like in my diet like when i started to eliminate and getting cleaner and i ate some pork and i've been hearing a lot of research on how like low quality of the meat was and i ate it and it made me feel like crap it made me like it was kind of like how i introduced like alcohol like you guys like if you introduce alcohol back to your body your body's telling you this is not good for you <laughs> you know and i listened and i was like okay maybe i do eliminate uh the pork you know i eat it once in a while but rare you know it's only on like occasions and stuff and i know when i'm eating it you know got to do something extra water extra shake of like ag1 uh but i'm planning i'm strategizing so nutrition is a lot of like strategy as well too instead of just being black and white so that's my take on nutrition no i think this is interesting and i think that there's some some good gaps there to connect back to the uh the regular person like me who isn't a bodybuilder which you guys hit the nail on the head right so and so i i know i now have a better understanding of macro so it's like okay balance diet right pretty standard have something that's going to give you energy have something that's going to provide you the protein and then use the vegetables to help that absorb faster right it's like so simple there's right. your diet everybody we're going to call it the, the amber sam Ning diet it's, it's the, the kiss diet. Just keep no, it's, it's, it's not a diet <laughs> It's like, yeah, it's, it's not like, a diet. It's just here's here's what you do if you want to make money, right? You work hard. Here's how yeah. you do it. <laughs> yeah, that's you know, true. It's not like ours. We didn't invent it. We're just teaching it or coaching it. <laughs> it's funny though how we we complicate it though, right? Because like for the most most of us, like we're and and this I think it's true for a lot of people, right? We want the easy button. We want the easy things. We're so adept to like I mean all this stuff that we have now access to on digitally information at the push of a button. You know, we're very like immediate results driven in this society. So it's, I think that's why you see so many of these, like those Zempics of the world and everything else, like the quick and easy to, you know, oh, yeah. if I just take this and pay for it, then I'm done. And like, I'm good. And it's like, just, just eat normal, like a normal, well-balanced meal and use your body and you're going to be good. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, but it's funny it. how we don't really want to do the work. So I want to ask you for those women, because I know that this there's a real fear in women of going to the gym and getting that gym muscle when they want the feminine look and feel and everything else, right? And I also know that there's also judgment from the masculinity side, right? That point at women that are working on their body, just like you kind of hit on, Amber. So tell me about navigating that. I mean, now that you've started your journey you started doing it are you finding that you're getting more criticized as you progress on or is the criticism starting to fall off was it like kind of more early on and has has that kind of fallen off have you shaken that off from you now or tell me where you at where you're at now with that so i do get criticized a lot but it's criticism <laughs> that i look for um in in the active sport of bodybuilding you want somebody to constantly be critiquing you because that's how you're going to get better but when it right. comes to like outside people critiquing um i would say well i would say not brave enough to my face but you can very much tell the criticism is there by how my friendships have changed how certain people would comment on my posts all the time when I was showing like my before self, but now that my now self is 20 times better than my before self, <laughs> like there's no more like fire emojis in the comment sections. There's no more like, Oh my God, girl, you're doing amazing there. It, so the criticism is now silent, but you know, it's there. And I think uh, Sam Hong can, attest to that it's now people are just in the background you can tell they're judging they want to interject something smart sometimes they are brave enough well you just do that because you're just you're just vain or you know you're all about your looks and it's like okay well <laughs> clearly don't it's kind of a down one if you if you actually it's tough uh and that's why i think people don't go into this realm of like putting themselves out there but uh, you know i wish more people do because uh, it, it it makes people a little bit more comfortable. and those comments are like it's keyboard warriors we're we're warriors we're in the trenches we're doing stuff, you know like you and danny and you like we're building business we're doing stuff we're in the trenches 
feel like when people like comment those kind of stuff, for me is like I've always been a person that like I better back up if someone comes off and like saying something and and I I've been able to just kind of fend that off for a while. If you express your knowledge, understanding of it and stuff, it, there there will always be a fair amount of like ignorant people about how yeah. to do it, you know, and that's almost like the nature thing and you gotta. In a way, you have to be understanding that, and but you also have to understand where you're at in the right. place. At. And I more in- feel like you get to a point because you do put so much work into, and this is for someone who's not even bodybuilding. This is just someone who has routine of going to the gym and they very much care about just taking care of their body type mindset, whether you're male or female. You really, because you're putting your body under so much pressure every single day, like you're literally tearing down your body to build it up. You, every single day and you have pain every single day. So eventually where, when those outside criticisms do come and it's coming from a source that you know is not valid, you know, like you have a 300 pound unhealthy person telling me that I'm unhealthy in my lifestyle, I'm gonna be respectful, but it's also gonna not hurt my feelings. You know what I'm saying? Like you get a really tough skin because you're like, I am my worst critique, like critic, and I will critique myself harder than anyone else will. So your <laughs> words don't mean anything to me because, like, what? you almost take the power away from others because of how yeah, that's right. strong it's you get mentally. Yeah, and and I, that's a that's fascinating there, Amber, too, because like I, I think you hit the nail on the head with this, right? And that's like when people are starting anything new, I think that they start with that level of acceptance, right? They're looking for acceptance in some way, shape, or form that their peer group is going to say, it's okay that you're doing that. And I think that that, that's just part of us being herd driven animals and social animals and part of our social dynamic. But there hits a point, which was what you said, where acceptance kind of switches over where you don't really care about acceptance anymore. Instead, you start to have empathy. And you start to like, like you said, in the example of the 300 pound person, that's telling you that you're unhealthy. Instead of it being like, well, look at you fatty, you know, like, instead of it being that angle, you end up having this kind of empathetic experience for them where it's yeah. like, oh, I feel really bad that you see it that way. Like, mm-hmm. I feel really bad that, that you, you obviously don't take it as serious as me. Um, right. You know, and, and I think that that's something that people definitely don't realize. And especially, I would even say, and particularly women, that one of the hardest things for them, um, and I know this even just with my, with my wife and her businesses, women inherently are more emotional than men. And they tend to react more to their emotions than men do just by nature. And I think that there's a point that is so empowering for, for the, uh, for women in particular, where it's like, you don't like, you're going to get like women get criticized more than men in general. And I think that it can definitely break a woman down and it's, it's hard for them because they want to be accepted. They want to feel good, but there's that point where if you're doing the thing, then all of a sudden you have empathy for people, right? And once you have that empathy for understanding why they say what they say, and it's not like it's valid or right or any of that, but it's just like, wow, I'm just sorry you feel that way. You know, like, I'm sorry that X, Y, or Z happened in your life and you feel that way. And you have that level of empathy. And it sounds like you're kind of there with that. And maybe just touch on like, how empowering is that for you as a woman And for anything that you decide that you want to put your mind to, I mean, do you feel like now that you have hit these kind of levels that you can just basically, if you wanted to do, if you wanted to go start the next competitor to Tesla, you feel like you could probably go do it. Is that? Oh yeah, absolutely. And that's because now my self-worth and my confidence is self-made. I have not been, now the people that I surround myself with are very encouraging and, you know, do help build my self-worth, but when it comes to anything that you decide you want to do in your life, whether it's your career or, you know, your extracurricular activities, relationships, or just your self-worth, just wanting to become healthier. My number one question always is why, 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 what is your why? Are you doing it because you feel this is what you have to do? Or are you doing it because this is how you feel you have to look in order to get attention that you're wanting from someone you know, that you're trying to impress because the why is going to greatly affect your end result. And also if it's actually going to be a life changing decision. So if your why is based on someone else's view of you, 
that is not going to last for very long. And it's not going to be something that you enjoy doing. But if you decide, no, I'm doing this for me. I don't really care what the end result is. I don't really care like what my aesthetic ends up looking like because we all have aesthetically different looks. I'm not going to look anything like someone else because it's just... So that unrealistic expectation is already there for women. Oh, I want to look like her. Well, you're not ever going to look like her, <laughs> you know, and that's okay. But going into the gym, you can have like your motivations and you can have your people that you look up to, but that gym session needs to be purely for me. I'm doing this for me. I don't care what someone else thinks of me. I don't care what someone says of my body, whether it's a good thing or even compliments now can come across as like, <clears throat> thank you. <laughs> like, I know, <laughs> I appreciate it. But you know, you just put so much work into it that when someone compliments you, you're like, thanks. <laughs> like, you know, it's, so it it's a good. It's just, it's oh, the same way as if someone would backhand, you know, be like, oh, you look like crap. You're like, yeah, what? we go. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if, those, if it, like Amber is like a celebrity that everybody knows her and stuff, it's like everybody like, I literally stepped into the gym maybe like within a month, like I knew like a, a good amount of people and stuff because it's just like an yeah. atmosphere, you know, and being like coaches and stuff, like people do look up to you and stuff and then you give them advice and it's it's a good, it's a good cycle in the gym, but you know, I wish more people would be in there and I'm so heavily in it because I think that's like my life. But when I step out of it and like, oh, not everybody lives this healthy lifestyle. No. Yeah. Yeah. It but bring Just like walking into a heavily populated activity. Say it's like yeah. awesome or the mall. And you're looking around and you're like, because that vintage or the gym we go to, everyone's insane. Like everyone looks amazing. You're like, man, like you're checking yourself like, oh man, I think I need to grow this area. And then you walk out in the real world and does anyone work out? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> am I the minority? It's, it's weird. It's a little different. The world's the world's a little bit different, you know. But that's like why we put content out, share that. But yeah. I, that gave us about like the the female side about bodybuilding and like prep and the amount of discipline is exactly like what uh, we need. But we're getting closer towards our end of the show. And what I like to do is if if you're, I know you're working on a lot of stuff. You're promoting, and then it looked like you just got a new sponsorship, correct? And promote anything your brand your instagram how we could get a hold of you and we definitely need to have you back on the podcast after the show or like updates and stuff because sure. you're just inspiring and um if it uh, uh but yeah plug yourself that's what the <laughs> you're doing a great job for me already uh no so my instagram you can find me at life with amber 22 that's my fitness page um, and then, yes, I did just get, I just became an athlete with a supplement brand, Metabolic Nutrition. Uh, so again, yeah. if you're on my Instagram, you can go on there, click the link, or you can just go onto their website. And then of course you can use my code AMS for 20% off. So that was super exciting. Um, I am looking to get several training certificates, uh, personal training, as well as nutrition, um, so I am working on that self-development aspect that we can actually start hopefully helping others more than just telling my story. Um, and then, yeah, uh, right now, end of May, I start prep for this next competition. So it'll be balls to the wall here in a few weeks. <laughs> so getting all the last minute foods in and getting those extra pushes in at the gym is going to be... Um, it's the the Chesapeake one that you're competing in, right? Is yes. What? Yeah. Yeah. So Danny, uh, I'm competing too, so <laughs> we can get like updates. You can see like the, you'll be able to see the difference in like mindset. For me, it's like as I get closer to my my focus gets more keen. Like when I start to. Yeah, because you don't have anything else to do. You can't eat. You can't really go. You have to, all you can do is like think. <laughs> and sometimes that's the struggle. <laughs> I, I tell you, like uh, for me, like prep is kind of like. Uh, it's a spiritual practice because I'm it so is. depressed. It's yep. like a it I get <clears throat> myself and my mission and my purpose and then and then when it's done you're like oh shit you know you learned a lot about yourself yes. but yeah and you know I'm trying to uh, teach a little bit more about the mind muscle connection uh, because oh. I've been yep. I have like Eastern philosophy and understanding yoga and Buddhism and how that applies to like the brain and the muscle and stuff so that's a lot about uh, what I'm trying to bring something a little bit different than what is already now in the fitness industry. 
everybody knows how to count macros, people not in nutrition, but I think there's that side of uh, learning how to really connect this part with like building specific shapes, controlling specific areas with just like your mind and stuff too. But uh, that's a deep thing that I'm working on as well too. And uh, I, that's all I can say, Dan. And you want to say anything and then we'll close out the show for the, the this podcast was wonderful. Very interesting. Yeah, no, this has been great. Amber, I got one last thing for you. Um, and then we'll wrap it up. But so what's the future, Amber? Where are you headed? What are you doing with all this? Um, you know, what's your what's your goals? Uh, so I am hoping to start implementing this type of lifestyle. I want I really want to help women. Uh, if men are in there, great. But there are so many misconceptions. Again, not even not not even in bodybuilding, just in the fitness realm, period. There's a lot of fears for women. There's a lot of fear when it comes to food for women. So I, my heart goes out to them because I've been there, I've done that, and I know how it's a miserable place to be. So not only finding joy through fitness, but also finding joy in food, you know, not feeling guilty for it. Um, I really, really want to help in that. So again, getting cer certified in certain things so that I can, from a knowledge standpoint, be able to help, but also from just a personal, like I've been there, done that standpoint, be able to help them out too. So yeah, I, you know, and obviously, um, as long as bodybuilding is something that I can do with my life, I really want to keep pursuing that sport, um, you know, and just still being a crazy Amber outside of the gym, you know, making bread and doing ice baths and being a mom, being a wife. Oh, I got, I got one thing to say. I thought your your screen name was Lift with Amber, but then you said Life with Amber. <laughs> yeah, Life with Amber. Yeah. Why, why did you do that? <laughs> yeah, Life with Amber. I was going to do Lift, but again, my life's so sporadic. I was like, you know what? I'm going to not put myself in a box. I'm just going to do Life. That way everything fits in that category. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. I love it. Well, make sure you guys follow Amber. Um, we'll drop the her social handles. I definitely want to follow you and kind of keep an eye on your journey because it just sounds oh, awesome. You. Congratulations on all your success. And, you know, for real, like, I think the biggest thing for, uh, at least for me, the take home is you broke free, right? And now you have that freedom to craft the the life that you want to live and and hats off to you for making that leap. That's huge. And thank you so much for sharing that part of your story and being vulnerable here on the show. Those are the nuggets that I think our audience really resonates with and the people that are consuming the content. Like that's the stuff that like, Hey, you know, it's inspiring to say you can do it. You can get started too. Right. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. You got anything, you got anything to wrap up or should I close her out? No, I think the conversation was fantastic. Uh, the knowledge, the insight was exactly what I think the audience need. And, you know, just getting more information out there and the journey is inspiring. And yeah, we're here to support as well, too. Uh, and it's always about giving back to the community. And Amber does that a wonderful job. I, I just got to plug her because I saw on, I think it was your Instagram or gym owner, Will, just had a baby and it looked like Amber cooked them a whole meal. I was like, dang, that's and that's like that's some good that's some good karma good woo woo <laughs> no i appreciate <laughs> yeah. that yeah and definitely share what your network and if you need us or anything we're here at the podcast and people form academy okay awesome well thank All you guys, guys so much All absolutely right. this has been flow in flow out fifo we are here to help raise the collective vibrations for everybody through sharing stories like we just had with amber's amazing story um, so yeah, if you guys are interested in being a guest on the show, feel free to reach out to Sam Nang or myself directly. We can tee you up with our schedule. Uh, new episodes coming out every Monday morning at six, Friday at four. And yeah, looking forward to see you guys on the next show. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.